living room. Night Ellie, 27, sinks into the couch, worn out from a demanding day at work. She gazes at her laptop, tackling emails as the clock inches past midnight. Ellie. Gosh, I really should hit the hay. Early meeting tomorrow. Closing her laptop, she rises to turn off the lights. In doing so, she discerns a silhouette at the far end of the hallway, barely visible in the moonlit room. Ellie, taken aback. Oh, who's there? No answer. Ellie peers down the dim corridor, struggling to discern any details of the shadowy figure. After a moment, it fades away. Ellie, shaking her head, probably just a play of light. This house is ancient, I bet it's creaking or something. She chuckles nervously, dismissing the incident, and heads to bed. Nevertheless, an unsettling feeling lingers. Kitchen. Morning. Ellie brews a pot of coffee, hoping the caffeine will dispel the lingering unease from the night before. Her phone vibrates, a text from her friend Emaya. Maya. Text. Hey, how's it going in that vintage place you moved into last week? Settling in. Ellie types a reply, leaning against the counter and sipping her coffee. Ellie mostly fine, but this house needs some attention. I swear I saw a ghost last night, trying not to freak myself out. A beat and her phone buzzes with Mia's response. Maya, text. No way, a ghost for real. Swing by after work, spill the details. We'll open a bottle and you can spill the tea. Ellie smiles, appreciating her friend's offer to distract her from her overactive imagination. She quickly responds with a see you then and completes her morning routine. Living room, night. Later that evening, Ellie arrives at Mia's place with a bottle of wine in hand. They uncork it as Ellie recounts the peculiar incident from the night before. Jenna. Whoa, eerie. But it's probably just a shadow or something. This place is ancient, right? Samantha. Yeah, it's over a century old. The realtor mentioned that the original owners passed away here in the 1920s or something. Jenna gets a mischievous glint in her eye. Jenna. Well, there's one way to find out if it's truly haunted. Samantha eyes her cautiously, already regretting confiding in her friend about the incident. Samantha. Jenna, no. Whatever you're thinking, no. Jenna grins, already devising a plan. Samantha's residence, living room, night. A few nights later, Samantha and Jenna sit cross-legged on the living room floor, surrounded by candles, with Jenna's phone set up to record. Samantha eyes the glass of wine Jenna poured, suspicious of her intentions. Samantha, Jenna, I told you I don't actually want to contact any spirits. Jenna. Oh, come on, live a little. It'll be fun. Now hush, I'm going to try to make contact. Jenna closes her eyes and focuses, then begins speaking in a dramatic, echoing voice. Jenna. The spirits of this house, we call upon you. If you are here, make your presence known. Give us a sign. Knock three times upon the wall if you hear our call. The girls wait anxiously, staring into the dark corners of the room. Initially, nothing happens then. Three distinct knocks resonate from the kitchen. Samantha yelps and jumps, spilling her wine. Jenna shrieks with delight. Jenna! It worked! It answered! Samantha! Coincidence, it was probably the pipes or something settling. Jenna is undeterred and tries again, more insistently this time. Jenna, spirit, show yourself. We mean you no harm. What is your name? For a tense moment, there's only silence. Then a gust of wind sweeps through the room, though no windows are open, extinguishing the candles with a whoosh. Both girls scream in fright and cling to each other. When the wind subsides, an icy voice emanates all around them. Voice leave, this place. The girls scramble to their feet, knocking over furniture as they hastily exit through the front door into the night. Samantha's residence, night. Gasping for breath in the front yard, 
Samantha glares at Jenna through the darkness. Samantha, you had to go and provoke it, didn't you? Now it's angry. Jenna plays back the recording on her phone, both girls listening with wide eyes. Beyond the grainy audio, that disembodied voice is unmistakable. Jenna, I'm so sorry. I didn't think it would work. But look, we have proof now that it's real. What do we do? Samantha shudders, hugging herself as she stares up at the dark windows of her ominous home. An idea comes to her. Samantha, there's only one person who can assist us now. Car Day The following morning, Samantha drives down an extended country road, with Jenna in the passenger seat. Jenna examines a screenshot of a search result on her phone. Jenna, according to local ghost hunter forums, the most acclaimed paranormal investigator in these parts resides way out here. Think she can lend a hand? Samantha nervously chews her lip while navigating around a bend in the road. A dilapidated farmhouse appears in the distance, and she pulls into the overgrown dirt driveway. Samantha. Well, she's our best shot. Let's see what Miss Graves can do. They step out of the car and head towards the front door, exchanging an anxious glance before Samantha knocks loudly. After a prolonged moment, the door creaks open, revealing Miss Graves, a seasoned yet lively older woman. Miss Graves. Well, well. Visitors at last. Come in. Come in. Tell me what mischief you've stirred up. Miss Graves' Kitchen Day The girls recount their story to Miss Graves over mugs of chamomile tea, playing the unsettling recording on Jenna's phone. Miss Graves scratches her chin thoughtfully. Miss Graves sounds like an irate spirit, all right. Not surprising, that house has a grim history. The original owners met a tragic end, you know. Jenna and Samantha lean in, captivated. Miss Graves lowers her voice for dramatic effect. Miss Graves, in 1926, during the Great Depression, the husband lost his job. With no money or hope left, he snapped. He killed his wife and daughters with an axe before hanging himself in the attic. Their tormented souls have been trapped there ever since. The girls gasp, their eyes widening with horror. Miss Graves smiles, satisfied with the impact of her taily. Miss Graves, don't you fret now. I've dealt with worse over the years. I'll swing by tomorrow and cleanse the place. But you girls best find somewhere else to stay tonight, just to be safe. They readily agree, appreciative of Miss Graves' expertise. That night is bound to be a lengthy and unsettling one. Jenna's house living room, night. In an attempt to divert their attention from the somber history of Samantha's house, the girls engage in a playful popcorn fight while a comedy flickers on the TV. However, Samantha's gaze keeps drifting nervously towards the windows, her body tensing at every creak and groan. With a reassuring smile, Jenna nudges her. Jenna, you're safe here, I promise. Miss Graves will take care of it tomorrow. Just relax. They settle down to enjoy the movie, but a sudden crash of thunder startles them both, prompting simultaneous screams of fright. The storm unleashes its full fury, whipping trees and rattling the old house. Amidst the chaos, a ringing phone joins the cacophony, prompting Samantha to lunge for it in an attempt to silence the noise. Samantha answers the phone tentatively. Hello? Yet only wind and static echo through the line before it abruptly goes dead. She shudders and hangs up. Jenna offers a comforting squeeze to her arm. Just a dropped call in the storm. Try not to be spooked by shadows. However, both girls acknowledge the true source of their Unizelai Zelsiwere. The night stretches on relentlessly. Around 3 a.m., a sudden Thudi resonates from the bedroom, causing them to bolt upright with a collective scream. Through the door, an unearthly scraping noise emerges, steadily drawing nearer. Armed with a baseball bat, Jenna confronts the door with fearful resolve. 
Yet, when it swings open with an ominous creak, only darkness greets them. They share a relieved chuckle, their nerves on edge. Just the wind, come on, let's try to get some sleep. Yet, mere minutes later, a chilling gust sweeps through the room, and the lamp sputters out, casting them into complete darkness. A frigid breath sends shivers down their spines. Gradually, two small points of white light emerge in the darkness, hovering mere inches from their paralysed figures. An ear-splitting wail cuts through the night. At daybreak, the girls find themselves huddled together in fear. They rush to seek assistance from Miss Graves, tearfully pleading for the removal of the entity. The elderly woman listens solemnly. Indeed, dark matters at hand. But you've sought the right sorceress. I shall purify that property without delay. She gathers herbs and recites ancient incantations. Now let us rid ourselves of this threat once and for all. That evening, Miss Graves confronts the haunted dwelling. Evil spirit, your time has come. With unwavering resolve, she chants and sprinkles holy water. From within, an otherworldly scream rattles the windows. A luminous sphere materializes, writhing in unseen restraints. Undeterred, Miss Graves presses on. With a final cry, the specter dissipates in a burst of radiant light. The girls watch anxiously from a safe distance. Tears of relief streaming down their faces as tranquility descends. Rest peacefully now, troubled souls. Your tie to this realm is severed. With the curse lifted, Samantha can reclaim her home safely at last. Thanks to Miss Graves' intervention, the presence haunting those long-tormented walls will haunt them no longer. The two friends gaze toward their promising futures, the shadow of the past finally laid to rest.